Hello everyone, KV here, and welcome back to my year in review. This time I have with me actually two people. I have Maggie back once again. Hi. And I also have my good friend Lady Arietta here as well. Hello. And today we're going to be discussing something a little bit different. So part of this year of 2015 has been interesting because there was a lot of games that, that came out previously, mainly in 2014, that had a lot of DLC content released for them this year. <laughs> Mario Kart 8, Shovel Knight, Smash Brothers, um, a few others. And it was just kind of interesting to see all those d different content come out because it was kind of changing in a little bit. So I thought it would be kind of cool just to discuss the DLC just a little bit just because it does kind of change up things. I think starting off, let's go with the most like positive one. And I know late area may not have may not have much input for this one, but the DLC for Shovel Knight <laughs> was freaking amazing. It was just so precious, and it was just as good as the original Shovel Knight. So what it basically was, it was just it was another mode to play as a different character, uh, Plague Knight, and you got to play through the game at basically same stages, but Plague Knight plays very differently, has his own little cute story, has some unique music tracks for it. It definitely felt like it was kind of like a Shovel Knight 1.5, if you will, and it was completely free, which is kind of awesome. I wouldn't know, I never played Shovel Knight. <laughs> That's perfectly okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I did... I did a let's play of the show, of the Black Knight run as well, so you can go see that. It's it's fun. I highly recommend it. I mean, it's kind of like, if you haven't played Shovel Knight yet, you should play it, because it's fun, and sometimes it's hard, but it's fun. So there. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other major DLC that I can think of, at least, it started off, it started out last year, but it finished up this year, was the Mario Kart 8 DLC, in which they kind of brought some more stuff in with uh, another F-Zero course, because... F Zero is not going to ever have a sequel, I guess. <laughs> um, and the Animal Crossing course, which is honestly probably one of my new favorite courses in Mario Kart. Really, I've never actually seen the recent updates of Mario Kart because I've been touching other games instead of that one. That's perfectly so I fine. Don't, I don't know. I mean, the only one I have is um the Zelda one. Mm-hmm. And that was one that was released last year, but I didn't talk about much last year either. And I was just kind of I just liked it because it was pretty neat. It was pretty pretty cheap for what it was, and you, mm -hmm. of course you got the ability to play as Link and go through Hyrule and all that stuff, so I like that. I also like the Excite Bike course. That course just makes me happy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, some of the new courses that were added in the Spring DLC, which was released in April of 2015, they brought in um... They brought this really cool subway course that's like, I love this course because there's so much detail on it, and you don't see it because you're racing so much, but one of the courses, like, it has, like, a map that shows you, like, where most of the courses in Mario Kart 8 are located. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, it shows, like, it's like this train station map that's like, hey, if you want to get to Rainbow Road, I'm not sure how it gets you there, but, you know, whatever. You just take, you take the red line. If you want to get to, uh, Bowser's Castle, take the green line. Huh. <laughs> It was just nice little details like that. They also had that really. They also had a really cool uh, forest one too. There's a lot of a lot of the new courses were very interesting. And unlike the previous DLC, which did rely on a kind of a few more remake courses, the new one I don't think had many remake ones. It had the Cheese Land, which I wasn't a big fan of, and Baby Park, which I kind of also don't get either. But whatever. Everyone likes loop de loops. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I just kind of like, since you can't change the lap limit in Mario Kart 8, it just seems really odd to have this one here. <laughs> Other than that, like, yeah, it was just, I just like having those different courses. And it's fun to race with people, all obviously, and that's kind of sad that we're not seeing more for it, because I'd like to see some more updates for that game, because that game is still pretty fun, even though I haven't touched it in a while. But... The main one we're here for, now we've been prolonging it, is the DLC for Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> so starting off, Super Smash Brothers had its first batch of DLC that came out in uh, the spring, which was just Mewtwo and a few new stages. It was cool to see Mewtwo back. He plays exactly as he did in Melee with Smash 4 physics, so... I'm not quite sure the logistics of that, but as much as I like Mewtwo, I'm kind of just like, I'm not really sure how much was really put e into it. E yeah. And I mean, I like Mewtwo and all, but it's kind of like, it's mm, a little questionable. He's, 
he's kind of back for the same reason why Roy is back, because the fans wanted them. But see, that's where I get really confused, though. So, the next one, the next uh, batch of DLC came out in June, which was Lucas, Ryu, and Roy. Ryu being a completely new character, who is actually a lot of fun if you get to play as him. Well, he also brings in a new stage, which is a stage based on Street Fighter 2, that uh, dojo stage, which has actually become one of my favorite stages in the game. <laughs> and I don't have Ryu, the so I can't really say. What? I don't have Ryu, so I can't really say. <laughs> no, that's alright. Uh, well, actually, I will bring this up. It's a nice thing about in the Smash DLC is that with the Mario Kart DLC, if you wanted to play the new courses, you had to play with people who actually had them. In the Smash DLC, if you're playing with people who don't have the courses or the characters, you can still select those courses or characters, and a lot of other people, like friends, play on them. So I think that's kind of nice. Wait, yeah. really? Yeah, so if I was to play with you online and I chose the uh, dojo stage from Street Fighter, you would actually be able to play on that stage. Oh, I thought you meant, like, have the other people choose the character. So I was like, wait a minute, what? Oh, no, 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 you can't choose the character, no. But yeah, that's, you can, that's you can right, see the use. character and you can play on the stage without yeah, yeah, yeah. actually having the DLC itself. It was nice to see Lucas back because Lucas was kind of his own character anyway from Brawl, so it was nice to have him back and be a lot more happier. And, Yay! And he was my personal fave, so <laughs> having him back really made me smile. Mm -hmm. And I then mean, Roy's back for some reason. With a slight difference, at least, but he's still half a clone of... He's still <laughs> mostly a clone. Yeah, <laughs> still mostly a clone. That Which, is... Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I'm not even going to deny that. Yeah, his model's been updated, so he looks nice. They've, they have redid voice clips, that's great, but um, we have three of the same character <laughs> in the game, guys. <laughs> we already have Lucina, there was no point to bring Roy back. I understand Mewtwo because Mewtwo is his own unique character. Not so much for Roy. And this Fans. is kind of where things get to be a little dodgy as we get into the later DLC, but I like Roy. I liked him in Melee, and I'm okay with him, but I still think it was kind of really pointless when we already had a Marth clone as it was. Like I said, the fans wanted him, so I guess he came back because the fans wanted him. Well, I was, I'm just really confused. What fans? As far as I understood, Roy was just promotional material for... Yeah, he, he he was, because he was released before the actual game was, so it's like, um... But? <laughs> yeah, so I like, because they, they liked him in Melee, I guess. I'm like, sure, then, you know, let's get Pichu back. Let's get Young Link back. I mean, yeah. Wait, we already but... have Young Link. Back. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> hey, some people will say that's not the same thing, and I mean, technically, we why don't we just call Lucina the new Roy? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? I mean, I know like goes against her character from her own game, but we pretty much know that she's just in there as a clone of Marth anyway, so Yeah, nobody believed me when I said she's <laughs> But anyways <laughs> <laughs> So I'll be honest, Ryu is actually a lot of fun. If you haven't been able to play as Ryu yet, I would suggest picking him up. He's a fun fighter. He's a unique fighter in what he can do. I like that he kind of is kind of a stepping stone in how to learn the more traditional types of fighting games, of how his some of his button combinations work as far as some of his moveset. And, um, well, it's not the Japanese voice, I just really like the English voice actor Kyle Bear. So, <laughs> it's just fun to hear him say things like, talk is cheap, and do this really, really angry grunts when he taunts. <laughs> sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, Ryu is actually more of a surprise than most of the ones that have been revealed because we already had a Capcom representative, which is Mega Man, so when yeah. Ryu was showed, I was like, huh, that's interesting. But if you think about it, it also makes sense because there was a Street Fighter game for Super Nintendo back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Street so, Fighter, and basically based yeah. on Street Fighter 2, which most of Ryu's uh, looks, moves, and style are based on, because I've seen the more recent Ryu games. I think I've seen a promotional for Street Fighter 5 where he has, like, a beard? What? Question mark? I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it was very, that was kind of cool. And then uh, DLC kind of stopped for a little bit. We got a few new updates in the fall, which was just some new, st which was a quote unquote new stage, which is the Super Mario Maker stage, which was interesting, silly, but interesting. <laughs> and let's just throw in a bunch of old stages from previous games. Like, you know, 
You love all the stages in Smash 64, right? I've never played the 64 version of Smash, so I can't really say. <laughs> well, personally for me, I like the Dreamline stage from the 64 era. I know it's already been in another Smash Bros, which was Melee, but I was kind of cool with that. Um, I don't mind the 64 Hyrule, but it does seem kind of, you know, cheap that we're only doing 64 stages. And there was one stage that was taken from Brawl, and that was the pirate ship from Brawl. That came back. But those were all at a fee for DLC, as opposed to just kind of being like, hey, here you go. And I kind of think, and the only reason I bring that up is because I think of another game that came out this year, which is Splatoon, and literally any time there's an update, it's pretty much like, here you go, you just you just get it. There's nothing, there's no pay for a new stage or anything like that, you just get it. And I'm not, I guess for, for a lot of the returning stages, since majority of the new stages are just old stages, I don't quite understand why they needed to be like a 3 to $4 amount. Jeez, is it really that much? I haven't even checked the shop lately. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm over. Maybe I'm overpricing Exaggerating it a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, eh. but it's still kind of. It is not. It's like it's a quick little. And I get it. Like it's just if you're a fan of it. But for me, I'm just kind of like I'm just thinking like why it's. I get that you obviously <sighs> can't. You probably don't have the assets or the materials from the original '64 game, so you did have to kind of build it from the ground up a little bit, but. That's not saying much if you're still trying to make it look pretty dated. Yeah. But eh, eh. at least at least the pirate ship stage back. I like that stage. Um, but of course we have to then discuss the big thing that happened this year, which was the <laughs> Super Smash Brothers ballot, which they asked people to vote for characters, and mm. that <laughs> had some issues. Um, Maggie, I'll let you start talking about that first, because I think you had the most insight on what that whole dealio was. Well, um, as most people probably understand, is when they looked at the... They watched the Direct and got to see the DLC. The three new characters being Corrin, which I'm okay with, Bayonetta, which I'm really happy for, and then, for some reason, Cloud who has absolutely no history being part of Nintendo. But, you know, who cares, <sighs> right? <laughs> yeah. And, well, not only does he have no history with Nintendo outside of non-canon Kingdom Hearts appearances, but what history he kind of does have, like, out of game-wise, is negative. Meaning, him and Square, when the game was originally supposed to be for the Nintendo 64... And then Sony left because they didn't want to listen well, Square you left. Know, to Nintendo's Sony had already, wishes. Sony had already left because oh, yeah. Nintendo Square... had dropped the ball of them on something, but that's different. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Square left because of issues with Nintendo's wishes for the game. And it actually led to a very long period of time before Square and Nintendo worked together again. So this character kind of was the cause of a bitter breakup. <laughs> and yeah, it's I, it makes no sense why other than, you know, it's just what loud maj- complaining fans what wanted. I ask, like why were people even wanting this in the first place? If you were playing Smash Bros. in the first place and you knew it was about Nintendo's All-Stars, why were you even thinking this would be a thing that should be possible? I mean, it's in the game now, so we don't have any control over that, but to be honest, when Cloud was revealed before the other two characters, and I want to talk about these other two characters last to end on a positive note because I'm happy about both of them, but Cloud was introduced early on, and there was this huge, like, oh my god, I can't believe Cloud's in the game. And it's like, well, yeah, of course you can't believe your Cloud's in the game. It makes no sense as to why he's in the game. But, you know, whatever. I guess that's kind of, like, what really irks me about the Smash Bros. DLC a little bit. It's really trying to milk the money for all it's worth, whereas opposed to the Mario Kart DLC, which was, like, spend 16 bucks. Oh, by the way, get 16 new courses, 6 new racers, 6 new parts, boom, done, everything's fine. Also get some special stuff. So that would seem to be much more economical. And then I also look at Splatoon, which is just like, oh, hey, you need extra content? It's free. Here you go. And then I look at Smash going, huh, 
you're really just trying to milk this for all it's worth at this point, aren't you? Uh -huh. <laughs> and Cloud is kind of the shining example of that, because people are like, I've seen a lot of people being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Cloud's in the game, but I know when my friend Power Mount and I were watching, and uh, sadly he could not be here to discuss this either, because I know he would have some input to be... He was pretty upset too. <laughs> we were both watching that direct in which Cloud got revealed, and the moment Cloud showed up, we just collectively groaned. We were just like, this makes no sense, this is really bad, this is pretty much putting a slap on the face to everything that has been worked for to kind of make Smash what it is, and the end product was also pretty half-assed. So that's another thing entirely. <laughs> oh gosh, yes. I mean, if people like the character, okay, people have all different kinds of likes and whatnot, but, you know, if you're going to add this character, at least do it seriously and... Not half don't ask like... Not, yeah. He's just, he's, he's just a rip-off of every single character you can possibly name. He's mostly a Shulk and Ike clone with not completed animation cycles. Or just stealing animation cycles from other characters. Like, his dash animation is so lazy. Palutena. It's just, it just Palutena's dash animation. It's like, why? Well, because <laughs> in the game, that's how he... No, I don't care if that's, that's how not, the game that's, how he that's attacked. Not how, oh, God damn it. But it, it looks silly, it looks stupid... And he's also kind of broken at this current juncture as we're recording, which they have not released an update to kind of fix the fact that he is pretty broken to the point that I'm surprised he has not been banned yet from the Smash tournaments. Mm. That's because the fanboys are too busy, you know. And girls. Yeah. And fangirls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just lapping it up, so. Yeah, and the stage he comes equipped with was also fantastically lazy. Um, <laughs> the, the right down to the summon things look pretty bad. Uh, the effects are kind of neat, but the stage is cha is beyond chaotic. Like, it's one of the first stages I played that had a gimmick that I was like, wow, this is pretty stupid. Um, and it's a great choice of we only took two tracks that we just ripped from the original Final Fantasy VII and gave no craps what we were doing was another great like, it was, you, if you were blind, if you were on the fence about Cloud being in the game, and you saw what they pretty much did, you just go, wow, you are just really trying to get money out of people for the dumbest things right now. And that's kind of a slap in the face, and I just really irked me, because they were going in a pretty good direction until Cloud had to come in and ruin everything. Yeah. I'm just not even gonna say anything, because I'm pretty much just gonna blow up at this point. <laughs> so I kind of keeping quiet on this side here. Fair enough. And that, of course, then led to the ballot. The ballot was this big thing, everyone was voting on it, and when it came down to it, they all said, oh yeah, well, this character kind of won, and only that character. So then it was like, well, wait, only that character was the top voted in Europe, but what about the rest of the world? Um, Hi? What was the point of this battle thing in the first place if it was just A, for only one character, and B, you were just going to kind of, you know, ignore a lot of the votes as it was? I understand there's probably stupid votes out there for Goku, and honestly, Cloud should have been on that list of stupid votes, but I'm sure no one gave a crap at that point. But, um, it's just kind of that whole thing. The results as to the fact that Bayonetta's in the game, I'm fine with that. I'll, I'll talk, we'll talk about those two in a little bit since they haven't released yet, but the actual ballot process was kind of like, what the heck? It seems like the biggest crapshoot that really shouldn't have been a thing in the first place. Like, since Ryu, Lucas, Mewtwo, and Roy were added before the ballot, like, pretty much even began, there wasn't even really a point for them to do it, so why did they do it in the first place? <laughs> it yeah is very and poorly executed especially when it came time to the stipulations because at first it was vote for whatever video game character you feel would fit in and then of course during the direct there was little stipulations added of eligible and negotiable characters we still have no idea what that means yeah so it's pretty much characters that if it's not popular enough for interesting enough, or we can't get them very easily, I'm going to but assume. But see, that then goes, that counters act the fact that the other character that was introduced, uh, Korin slash Kamui, that character, other than Japan and Fire Emblem fans, 
probably isn't super popular, but he's still getting into the game. I'm not opposed to him in the game, but yeah, hi, what? Yeah, there's a lot of stipulations going around, and one of the theories that I've been working to put together is pretty much the three new DLC characters were supposed to be three ballot winners. Cloud technically won Japan, and be- yeah. he's re- obnoxiously popular over there, and everyone still loves him. And so they just realized he was going to win over there, and started making the character early for Christmas to sell them uh, them games, because Cloud. And uh, Europe, I guess, Bayonetta won, and then you have North America, who probably ruined everything. <sighs> Which is yep. why they just threw the ballots out and just went, yeah, let's just let's just say Bayonetta is for everyone and put Corrin in because advertisement. Mm-hmm. And I think the the, the whole reason like why North America's fault you're saying that's because of the whole the whole leak situation that happened last year. Well not right? only the whole leak situation, but there was an awful lot of people like voting for characters that just would have been not very great additions. Like For example, like, I know I'm being biased, but there's a lot of people voting for, like, Crystal from Star Fox and, like, K. Rool. And and then you have the people who are voting for, like, Shrek and Goku. And it just, yeah, it just feels like what Nintendo did is they kind of looked at, like, the people with the top votes, like, with Goku and Shrek and King K. Rool, Crystal, Ridley, the whole big pile of them, and just went, yeah, we're not going to do this. Let's just, instead of taking those characters off the list and looking at, you know, the possible good selection of characters, like, instead of looking at top five, looking at, like, top ten or top twenty, they just went, Mm -hmm. forget this, and just took the UK list and said, okay, we're going to go with this one instead. And then, I mean, not that I'm complaining, I I like Bayonetta, and I like Corrin. Mm -hmm. It's just, I wish we had a little more insight about what was going on and the reasoning behind what they decided to go with. More insight and more kind of reasoning as to why, because if they're still doing this and if they really want to do it as a money-making thing, this is kind of where I get really confused, is they should have just keep kept making more. Sakurai doesn't need to work on every piece of thing that's done with the game. They could put more characters in and keep updating it for like the next year to still make it relevant, so that way they can still push some more units. So, I don't quite understand what the point was, because it Event, at the end of the day, all that was added, I mean, the roster was pretty big for the Smash as it was, so I'm not complaining about that. And, you know, it's great to have seven new characters, of which only three of them are actually original. <laughs> three of them are just copy-paste from the previous games, and one is a hodgepodge of we're lazy, let's throw everything into this character. So, it's kind of a slap in the face, basically, because when you think, again, I go back to the Splatoon and Mario Kart examples, those are new things. It isn't just, oh, let's just rehash something. It's, no, this is new, have fun. I don't understand why Smash couldn't do Especially that Especially with well. Sakurai saying that he didn't want to put so much into DLC because he didn't feel that people should have to buy so much DLC. And yet, here we are, mm-hmm. buying all the characters off DLC because... Yeah. Why? <laughs> mm-hmm. And stages and all that. And again, going back to the model of the other two games, when you compare the three games, you're paying a lot more for Smash than you'd ever pay for Splatoon <sighs> or Mario Kart 8. It's, it if you're trying to get everything. And that's kind of like, that's like if that's really the case, then why would you even do this in the first place? I think the initial roster was just fine. So, I... I mean, of course, like, the DLC is... Nice to have. We're not trying to say that we don't want nothing. We're very grateful for what we mm-hmm. did get. It's just there's some low points. Yeah, like the, the low hard. points. There's there's just some low points that really didn't make sense, and it just seems like there was no care. It, it, again, going back yeah. to that, even just the stage with the music. There's been officially redone versions of those two songs by Square that Nintendo could have used. I I don't know the negotiations or whatnot going on, but instead of using the nicer versions, they used the original PlayStation 1 versions, and 
it just sounds it's just so empty the stage And I mean, there's there we could talk about that for forever, especially in that particular case, because there's so many better Final Fantasy characters you could have chosen, and yada yada yada. But I think to shift it off to be on a more positive note to end this off, these two characters for Smash haven't been introduced, uh, haven't been released yet. But the inclusion of both Corin slash Kamui, whoever, whatever way you want to say it, whoever, either way is fine with me, and Bayonetta. Those characters look amazing, and it looks like they actually put some hard work and originality into them. Yeah, and they look balanced as well. Yeah, I'm not sure about balance, because Corrin looks a little broken to me. <laughs> we'll see what happens when they get released, but yeah, at least at this current juncture, what well, the nice thing about Corrin is that it's not a Marth clone! <laughs> yeah! yeah! Really? <laughs> yeah, but still, most hated character. character in the game. So what shows you from? <laughs> that that's that's just me. <laughs> and as far as Bayonetta goes, Bayonetta looks like she's gonna have a f- ton of fun. I know my friend Power Mad, who has played the Bayonetta games, says that her playstyle seems to mimic almost identically, or if not very close enough, to how her actual games play in her real in her actual games. So that's gonna be a lot of fun to figure out. And I like that she has a nice, unique stage that comes with her as well. That like falling clock thing that has the debris coming in. Oh, that that's one. a cool idea that's, for a stage. Yeah. I can't wait to play that stage. Mm-hmm. And those, all that stuff will get released in February. So, yeah, that's... Uh, oh, I know we spent a lot of time. I knew it was going to be a lot of time discussing the low points, but, you know, that's how it is. But as far as everything else, like the Shovel Knight DLC, fantastic. Mario Kart 8 DLC, fantastic. 78% of the <laughs> Smash Bros. DLC. Good! <laughs> Uh, but I look forward to those two new characters, and I hope everyone else has been playing it with the new characters and enjoying them, or not enjoying them, but whatever you, whatever you want as well. Thank you both, Maggie and Lady Aria, for joining me to discuss the most. DLC stuff. <laughs> I didn't say much, but okay. You said enough. You, said, <laughs> you spoke your mind, and you weren't afraid to understand that sometimes we need to hail Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> That's an in joke. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all once again. I will see you all on the next video when we start going over my top three games, basically my three games of the year, on December 31st. Ciao! Bye!